In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a React app using Vite and then create components using JSX. And I have a different video where I explain what React is and why you would want to use it. And I'll leave a link to that video in the description. So to make a Vite app, we usually start by typing yarn create Vite. And if you don't have yarn installed already, you can install it using npm i g for global yarn. And once you have Yarn installed, you can run Yarn Create Vite, which will start creating a new app. And actually, I want to do this on my desktop. So I'm just going to CD to my desktop, Yarn Create Vite. And we are going to create a new project. I'm going to call this uh, maybe just Hello World. I haven't created a Hello World in a while. Uh, and we are going to create this as a React app using just JavaScript, but you can also set this up using TypeScript if you wanted to use TypeScript. So now it's created that project for us. I'm going to CD into Hello World, and then I need to install all the dependencies using Yarn, and then I can run the dev server using Yarn Dev, and this will set up a server at localhost 3000 usually, but on my computer, it's at localhost 5173. And I'm just going to open that up in the browser and we see the default V React landing page. And this is just a bunch of placeholder code so that we have something when we actually launch the app. So let's open this up in VS Code and see what the default code actually looks like. So the entry point into the application is the index.html file, but we'll never actually really look at this file because everything we do in React is in JavaScript. And this is just here to load the first JavaScript file, which is main.jsx. So if we go into the source directory, we can see a main.jsx file and there's not much in here. The most noticeable thing for us is that there is this app component, which is being imported from app.jsx, which is right here. And this is where the code that we see on the screen exists. Here's the V logo and that V plus react code here that we see right here. And this is really where we start writing our JSX. This is where we start adding our own logic and components to build our application. And it's kind of cool to see this placeholder code. We see examples of events and state. Uh, we can see CSS being imported into the component. Uh, even SVGs can be imported straight into the JavaScript. But for now, let's delete most of this stuff. So I just want to keep the CSS file and this main div. And then let's also just add in an H1 uh, hello world. So I've stripped this down just to a bare minimum. And if we save this file and go back to the browser, it should have refreshed everything for us. And we have that basic hello world. So when we create a React app, we're going to start in app.jsx. This is really our entry point where we can start modifying code and adding new code. And notice that there are some default styles already on this page. I have this background color and hello world has been vertically and horizontally centered. And that's because there are some default CSS styles going on. So there are two CSS files here. There's the index.css, which we can mostly just ignore. And it is a bunch of CSS resets and some default CSS settings. And then we have this app.css file. And actually everything below root can be deleted because we deleted all of the code that actually goes with that. But each component, right now I have this app.jsx component, each component can have a CSS file with it that we can import straight into that component. And I'll talk a little bit more about CSS later, but I'm just gonna close this for now and head back to app.jsx. One of the first things to notice is that this is a .jsx file but that means that it's still a JavaScript file that we can just do extra things in. So I have this funky looking code here that's JavaScript mixed with HTML it looks like, but I can still just write normal JavaScript in here. So I could create a function called uh, say hello that console logs hello world, and then I could just call this function here or I could call it inside of my app component. This is all just normal JavaScript with some extra stuff in it. So if I were to run this code now and open the terminal, we should be able to see those hello worlds printed in the console. I'm just going to clear this and refresh. And I can see, yeah, a few hello worlds have been printed out here. So this is just a normal JavaScript file. The normal rules of JavaScript apply. However, we have this other stuff in here. We have this HTML looking stuff in here and we can create these components and components are functions 
that start with a capital letter and return some markup. And there's a lot you can do with components and they can get really advanced, but at a really basic level, that's all they are. Just a normal JavaScript function that starts with a capital letter and returns some markup. And for the most part, the markup in here is very much like the normal HTML that you already know and use. So anytime I wanna add a new thing in here, something, uh, I can just add it as if it were normal HTML and it should still work, it should still appear on the screen. And since the app component is the entry point into our app, whatever is returned here will appear on the screen. But this isn't HTML, it's JSX, and there are some differences that we have to take note of. For example, if I create another element here that just has some more text in it, uh, React is gonna start complaining because we have to return a single root element from a component. And right now I'm returning a div and a p tag. So we're only allowed to return one thing. So I can put this p tag inside of this div and now I'm returning a div that contains many other things. So if I wanted to actually have this outside of that div, I would have to wrap this in something like another div which fixes the problem. And if we look at the source code here, we'll be able to see that we have this outer div, then this inner div, then the other elements that were in that component. So that's one way of solving the problem where you can just wrap stuff in another div. But if you didn't want that extra div to be rendered on the page, you could just return an empty element like this. And that's also fine. The rule is just that you can only return one root element here. It doesn't matter if it's a real element or if it's just this fake empty thing. The second thing to know is that every element must close. So let's say I create an image tag here. In HTML, it'd be completely valid to have an image tag that does not close. But in React, we must close it either by putting a slash right here or we can even have a closing image tag like that. Either is fine in React, it just must be a closing tag. And if we look here, we can see that that image is rendered on the screen. But it's probably a nicer idea to just have this close like that. And then a third thing to note here is that because this is JavaScript and not HTML, any reserved words in JavaScript will have to have a different name in JSX. So in HTML, we would just use the word class to add a new class to a div, but because class is a thing in JavaScript, we can create a class using the class keyword, we have to have a different word in JSX, so we use class name. So I've got a couple of elements here being returned from app, and we can see them being rendered on the screen, but what if we wanna add some CSS to these elements? And in React, there are so many different ways to add CSS to your components that that would require a whole other video just on the different ways of doing it. For now, I'm just gonna keep it simple and talk about CSS imports, but that's not saying this is the right way or the only way. There are many, many ways, and we'll learn about those in another video. But for now, I'm gonna open up app.css and this CSS file is being imported into this component, which means that any styles we wanna to add to our app component here, we can just put in the app.css. So I'm gonna create a new rule in here, and I'm gonna set maybe the background color to something else. There we go. Let's see, what did that do? Uh, it's a slightly different background color. Um, let's do something else. Let's do like hot pink, there we go. All right, that really stands out now. So in order to add a new style here, uh, I'm just adding a normal CSS rule. And then in the JSX, I'm just gonna add a class using class name. So nothing crazy there. That's pretty much what you would see in an app not using React. So let's look at something a little bit different. Because this is a JavaScript file, we are coupling our markup with our JavaScript. We can write JavaScript within our markup. So right here, I'm gonna delete something and I'm gonna type in six plus nine right here. And if we go and view this on the screen, we'll see that this rendered as the text six plus nine because this is just normal markup. But if we go back in here and we surround this with an opening and a closing curly brace, this is now treated as JavaScript. So JavaScript will run this code, evaluate it, and whatever the result is, we should see on the screen, which is now 15. And we can see in the elements here that it just evaluated that and created a p tag with the number 15 in it. And we can do this with a lot of different JavaScript. For example, if I open some curly braces and create a new date and save this, if we go back 
there's actually nothing on the screen here. And if I check the console, I should see an error. Objects are not valid as a React child. And if you ever see this, it means that you tried to render something that couldn't be rendered by React. React just couldn't figure out how to render a date to the screen because it's a complex object. How should that be displayed? But we can just call the toString method, which will turn this into a string and then React can actually display that on the screen here. And I could actually take this out of here and within my app function, create a new variable called now. And then I could put that in the curly braces and now it will render this, but I can actually have logic up here at the top of the function. I can write whatever JavaScript I want and then just have some sort of output rendered out to the HTML page. And this is one of the main concepts of React. It's coupling the UI logic and the markup together in the same file. So in a traditional app, we'll separate the HTML and the JavaScript into different files. But in React, we keep them together. The HTML or JSX rather, and the actual UI logic go together in the same file. And then we separate our app into many different components. But the markup and the UI logic live together in the same file. And I keep talking about components plural as if we have many, but right now we just have this app component but we can create as many components as we want. So I could actually take this image tag and instead of putting it in this app component, I'm gonna create a brand new component and I'm gonna call this random image, which again, it just has to start with an uppercase character here. And then we're gonna return some markup, in this case, that image tag that grabs a random image from Pixum. And this is a component but we won't see it on the screen. We won't see that image anymore because in order to actually render a component, we have to include it in the markup that gets rendered. So since app is the entry point to the application, I'm gonna to have to include the random image component in apps markup. And we do that as if it were a normal HTML element except that we know it's a React component because it starts with an uppercase character. But we write it like this as a piece of markup. We never ever call a React component directly. We don't call it like a function. Even though it is a function, we always specify it in the markup as if it were another HTML tag. And now if I go back, I can see that that image is being rendered on the screen. And I'm gonna get rid of these old errors because they look kind of bad there. And one great thing about creating a component like this is that they are reusable. So I can just have three different random image components right there and we'll get three images rendered on the screen. But something that we usually do when we create a new component is that we put it in its own file. So even a small component like this might have its own file that I'm gonna create right now. So this is a random image component. So I'm gonna call this random image.jsx. So it's just the same name as the component and we put that function in there. And this file should just export this component and nothing else. And this is ES module syntax, which is just a JavaScript thing, not a React thing. But writing it like this means that this module exports this function called random image. And then if I wanna use that in a different file, I import that thing from the file. So now I have this separate component in its own file here, and I can import that into any other component like app.jsx and use it as much as I want. And if I wanted to, I could give this image a class name, call this random image. I could create a random image.css file and then just create some CSS for this. And back in my component, I'm going to import the random image.css file. So I'm including the markup, the CSS, and if I had any logic, I could include some logic in here too, that is all this nice self-contained component that can be reused. And that CSS did absolutely nothing, and that's because I called it random image, not random images. There we go, okay, wow, well, that doesn't look great but it shows that everything is linked up and working. And you can really create as many components as you want for any part of your markup. So for example, if I thought that all of this was a good grouping of code to put in its own component, I could cut this out, create a new file. Uh, I'm gonna call this hello world.jsx, uh, export a default function, uh, call it hello world. Remember it has to start with an uppercase character and then just return that markup. And we need to return only one root element here. So I'm just gonna wrap this in an empty tag 
And the reason we put brackets here is because return won't actually recognize anything if it's not on the same line as the return value. So to have this multi-line JSX return that starts on line three, we need to just wrap everything in brackets. Then in app, I can import my new hello world component from hello world and include that right here, just like this. And this has stopped working because I also need to take this now variable and put it in my hello world component. There we go. So we got this component that has a little bit of JavaScript logic and renders that to the screen. We have random image, which is really just an image tag, but also includes some CSS and then app.jsx, which is the entry point and includes the other components. And if we view this now, everything should be working. And although this is a really basic example, this is pretty much how you build a React app. You start creating all of these separate components that contain their own UI logic and markup, and then you can include those in different files and reuse them as much as you need. And the larger your application, the more components and the more files you have. But this is just a development thing, this JSX and all of these extra files, they only exist so that we can have a nicer developer experience. When it's time to actually put our app into production, we compile all of this code and minify it into just a couple of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. So there's no performance hit for separating out all of your code into different files. It's just a nice thing we have for development. So that's a brief introduction into making components, but we're lacking a lot of things here like interactivity and state management. But I'm gonna cover all of that in future videos. So stay tuned for those and make sure you subscribe if you don't wanna miss any of my future videos. Thank you